Uh, you're very welcome back. So, as you know, the whole world is getting ready for this game on Sunday. So let's talk to Michael Verney about Ballyhale against Ballygunner. Michael, hello. Joe, how are you? I, I wish the whole world was getting ready for it. There's a lot of people getting ready for it, but the timing of it is a bit unfortunate. I'm a big GA man, and I know like I'd be GA far more than soccer. I would have a fleeting interest in soccer, but I do think we're... Uh, neutralising our audience somewhat here and uh, shooting ourselves in the foot a bit here, really. Does, I, I think they could have play, probably played the game earlier in the day and had a massive audience leading it in. It could have been a perfect warm-up game for one of the biggest sporting occasions of all time. But listen, uh, that's the way they've, ro- they, they've rolled now. So unfortunately, they're going to clash, which is not which is far from ideal because a lot of people would, a lot more people mm. would watch this game if it wasn't on at the time that it's on. But listen, that's probably another matter. Far from ideal, I think, is probably putting it kindly. So yeah. It's, 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 very, it's borderline very kindly, yeah. idiotic, really, I think, especially when it's a game of this magnitude and one that people have been looking forward to really for eight, nine months. People have been counting down to uh, the renewal of rivalries. So I don't think there is a, a good explanation. What, again, is the best explanation as to why this game against or this game between Ballyhale and Ballygunner is throwing in at half past three and the World Cup final has been scheduled in for three o'clock on uh, Sunday for about four years. What's what's the logic? <laughs> logic is um, <laughs> logic's probably not the word now, but um, I think at this time of the year, probably pitches wise, Crow Park is obviously you know the best pitch in the country nearly on on any given day. Maybe aside from maybe Turles or Nolan Park, uh, the game's not going to be played in Nolan Park. It's not going to be played in Turles either because there's remedial work going on there at the moment because it's the only time they'd probably get to do it. So they're probably few enough options of where these two semi-finals could have been played I still think I still think we could have reached some sort of an agreement that that is better than this uh, as you say to me this is the biggest club game probably since Portumna played Ballyhale in that All-Ireland Club semi-final in 2009 which had massive crowds down in Turles and it was it was King Henry against you know the Prince in waiting in Joe Canning and this is probably the biggest game since then and the fact that they've played already this year and it finished in the way that it did makes it even bigger. And Colin Fenley stoking the fires a bit after their Leinster final win over Kilmacud only um, gets the blood flowing even more for it. So, Joe, uh, to put it simply, there is no logic, really. Yeah, OK. That'd be my sense as well. I mean, we could spend all day reading the explanations, but... The only thing I'd say on that, Joe, good. as well, is yeah. people will say, oh, the GA shouldn't bend for another sport and they should just go with what they have. That's uh, To me, I think that's a bit idiotic. Yeah. I think you're, you're, you're going up against, like, how many people will watch the, the Soccer World Cup in Ireland, let alone across the world? It's just silly to put our best club product, probably the best club product that we will have all year, yeah. up against, you know, a world product. Like, there's only going to be one winner and it's going to be an unbelievably emphatic winner. Um, the diehards will will watch the hurling, uh, myself and a few more, and a few more, the Ballyhale people will be there and the Ballygunner people will be there, but it's just taking away that real kind of, I suppose the casual viewer that would love to have an interest in. How many people will say over the next five days would love to watch the hurling, but the, the soccer's on, mm. so I can't. So I yeah. think we're, we're, we're really stupid to, to do what we're doing I, there. I think so, unfortunately. You have to pick your battles. I understand the logic that you can't bend to other sports overly, but this is an exceptional case and everybody would agree on that, unfortunately. So And, and it's tough for the players as well. And as you say, you know, for that, that floating voter who, with the advent of the new split season, is unsure as to whether he or she likes watching club games as a neutral all that much this might have been the game that kind of sparks something and then they meet again next year and before you know it you've got a few more extra eyeballs on your sport so that's why it's doubly disappointing but we're labelly we're, we're labouring the point uh, let's move on we, we agree it's not good and <laughs> to say the least so Ballygunner against uh, Ballygunner excuse me against Ballyhale Ballygunner last year won their first ever All-Ireland crown there was a last minute goal the substitute Harry Ruddle uh, deep in injury time so that's one reason why this is interesting too there is a geographical proximity Ballygunner about 20 minutes down the road over the Waterford border and then you alluded to it a, a, a sense of needle here so Colin Fenley of Ballyhale was talking in advance of this game and he said it's a big game all Ireland semi-final they beat us last year and then he said something which caught everybody's eye I'm not used to this kind of talk in the GEA, I would think, really. He said, their speech at the end of the game, it's not something you want to hear. You want that bit of respect. But look, we'll keep our heads down and we'll do what we can do. So it seemed 
very much like he was talking obviously about Barry Coughlin, Bally Gunner, captain. And people were looking back at the speech to see what the issue was. Certainly, he uh, spoke of winning five in a row. But the issue, it seems, is what he said about Bally Hale. So what he said in his speech, Barry Coughlin, in February was, and to Bally Hale, I'm not going to be patronising with you. You're going down as the best club team ever. Like, literally, we robbed it today, you know. I suppose you've done that to other teams, so I suppose it goes around, comes around. But I mean that with the most respect. You're on the road a long time, and hopefully we'll see you again next year if uh, you do get out again. What's the problem with that? I actually watched it back today because um, as a mostly predominantly a written journalist, words can look different on paper potentially than what they sounded like at the given moment in time. But I watched it back today. Uh, Barry Coughlin has done very few, I'd say, media interviews during his county career and during his club career either. Uh, he wouldn't be particularly used to doing a speech. It was all passion. It was quite raw. Um, and the way he talked about Belly Hale, I would have said, was in a very, a very complimentary fashion. But if you think um, county teams will take any morsel of... Uh, <laughs> motivation club teams are on a different level um it's literally like i see it i see it my own local paper is the midland tribune or the awfully independent would be the two papers and there'd be uh kevin egan the journalist does a ranking system within the within the clubs of you know one to 20 at the end of the year yeah and it was i think bally common won the intermediate football this year and literally posted it whatever number they had, he had put bally common at this year and was like it was like basically well joe brawley what do you think it at uh, and that happens at uh, club level, the length and breadth of the country. Uh, every team is written off. Bally Gunner said after winning, uh, was it their ninth uh, Waterford crown in a row this yeah, year? Yeah, ninth in a row. Some, some people were writing us off. Uh, I don't think anybody was writing them off, but you will literally look for any crumb of motivation. Um, if I was Colin Fenley's manager, if I was Pat Hoban, I would have said, you know, keep your powder dry potentially till after the semi-final where you can say, listen, we felt we were disrespected or whatever. Yeah. But to actually put it out on the table now makes it very interesting because there's no two ways about it. I'd, like, I'd be amazed if Barry Coughlin and Colin Fenley are not marking each other on Sunday. Nice. Uh, Colin would predominantly play at the edge of the square. He's probably played out centre forward a bit more this year. Barry Coughlin has nearly always been on the edge of the square of the defence. So, um, yeah, that'll be an interesting duel to say the least. And they've, they've come up against each other several times before, but... Uh, yeah, that, that'll definitely be spicy enough. And listen, I've said it to you before, Joe, I do think when you're talking about rivalries, um, I don't, I would, don't, wouldn't like it to be too bitter, but a bit of bitterness, a bit of needle. Um, you even saw it with Argentina and Holland the other night in soccer. It just does spice it up. And you can, you can, say, you can say it's true or not. I think it is true. People will tune in for that type of thing when they know there's a potential for a flashpoint or for something to happen or just even see how it unfolds. And mm. that's another fascinating narrative to Sunday's game. You like a squeeze of lemon on your rivalries, Michael. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But I, I, I mean, Penny for Coughlin's thoughts, because again, I, I, the, the speech, re, you know, it's, it, when you read it back, it, it, even I'm not delivering it properly because it just reads as someone talking very naturally, very sincerely and him saying, I'm not going to be patronising you. And he said, you're going down as the best club team ever. So in his speech, which is like, you know, Colin Fanny's like, put some respect by our name. He, in this speech, he has said, you're going down as the best club team ever. And he's saying, we robbed you today. You know, like, like we didn't even ne nearly deserve this. But look, you've robbed a few other teams. It goes around, it comes around. But even when he's saying you robbed a few other teams, that's almost like a sign of respect, you know? Like you've beaten teams you don't deserve to. A penny for his thought. I would think this going public, this being the story of the week, he now feels more disrespected than Colin Fenley ever felt about this whole thing. So we're now, <laughs> we're now onto the next version of this, I would think. Wait for Coughlin's comments after the game on Sunday. Yeah, probably. Um, and to be honest with you, just the way you're saying it, I'm just putting my maybe a manager's hat on and they might be saying... Like maybe is Barry Coughlin writing us off that we're the greatest team ever, but does that mean we're finished now? Does that mean it's their time now? And the fact that he mentioned about five mm. or potentially going on to five, which was like quite tongue in cheek. I think he said Jerry Hussey had said it, and why not win five now after if they do win one? Yeah. But uh, it does, it does make it does. It's a little added spice to Sunday as well, and there's there's plenty of other spiciness when you look around the field at different duels that are going to happen as well. But that's probably the one that most people will be focusing in on, and realistically. Whoever is to get the upper hand in that duel will probably go a long way to winning the game. Fenley's right. been, you know, outside of Adrian Mullen, probably Ballyhead's best player. So if Coughlin is able to tie him down, 
uh, that'll go somewhere to Ballygunner winning the game. Okay, interesting. Because Fenley was, I mean, look, it's wonderfully interesting. And he's, he's probably um, put a few bums on seats for this game by just talking so openly. It's great. He's 33 this year. He was saying he really didn't think after February he'd be playing again. He thought he was done. So now in winning 11th county title, 8th Leinster medal, you know, it's, it's just extraordinary what he's done. You mentioned Adrian Mullen. There's TJ Reid as well. Uh, he's recently become a father, by the way. And again, <laughs> this is like Kilkenny School of Hard, hard Knocks. Uh, Fenley was also asked, you know, about TJ Reid. He's a father now and juggling everything. He said, sure, look, he's not the first man in Ireland to become a father. So. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about him. A bit uh, of a Roy Keane-esque comment. I think, was a, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, he didn't have the baby, so why isn't he at training? Yeah, and he did say it with a smile, to be uh, fair. So it sounded like he was in good form. But so Fenley, Mullen, TJ Reid, uh, give us a few other names that we're looking out for, obviously, on Sunday. Yeah, Adrian Mullen will, will be huge in this game. Um, speaking to Jackie Tyrrell before the county final, they were uh, Ballyhale were playing James Stevens, and he had reckoned, and the longer it goes on, the longer season goes on, I believe it, and he said the mantle of you know, the main man in Ballyhale has passed from probably Henry to TJ and he kind of reckoned that it was been passed to Adrian Mullen now as well and he's really taken the game games by the scruff of the neck, you know, against Nace when they were struggling, he was absolutely outstanding. Uh, same the last day against Crokes, particularly in that first half uh, when they're on top and he's the sort of player that can just, he can literally play anywhere probably, he, he plays inside when he has to, he can win ball in there, he can score, he can create, he works ferociously hard, he's probably able to get through the volume of work without the ball that maybe TJ was able to do three or four years ago. TJ, I believe, is carrying a bit of a knock um, and he was used in more of an attacking role the last day, as in with the ball and maybe not able to track back as much as, as you'd normally expect. And Colin Fenley was probably filling that void of, of work rate maybe that TJ would be used to. But uh, Adrian Mullen is a, is a big one, uh, particularly because the last day, uh, Ballyhill were over overran a lot of the times around the middle of the pitch, particularly when Kilmacud got on top yeah. in that kind of third quarter of the game. And I, just for uh, people who are, again, because I appreciate not everyone is watching all these games, this is in the semi-final. Ballyhill, they are 14 points clear of Kilmacud at one stage and somehow surrender that back to a, a single point, I think. So it was an, an odd game in that respect. Oh, it was all over, Joe, realistically. Everybody, you know, most people thought it was the game was over at half time when they were 11 up. Then they get the first three points of the second half and they're 14 up. And, you know, I just think it's kind of the same old Bally Hale and they'll just keep them at arm's length uh, or potentially even push further clear and win the game by 20 points. But Kilmacud were just able to force their will on the game. And they, they, I wouldn't say they exposed Bally Hale, but they definitely um, forced a lot of openings in their defence and even working the ball out from their own defence. Serious pace something similar to what maybe Bally Gunner would have. And I'd say the two-week gap from the Leinster final to the All-Ireland semi-final, like, if if there is a, a fitness deficit, I'm not necessarily, necessarily saying there is, but if there is a bit of a fitness deficit from a Bally Hale point of view, you know, two weeks is, you know, you know, scant time to work on it within. Like, they would literally have been recovering for two or three days, building up to last weekend, and then they'd be tapering back down again. Uh, and it's funny, Bally Hale have tailed off, uh, tailed off the last day, maybe in that third quarter. Whereas Bally Gunner, it's like the the golfing analogy. Bally Gunner have used that third quarter traditionally in games, and particularly this year, that's their moving quarter. They moved against an Apirshig. They started moving against Bally Hale the last day as well. So mm. uh, Bally Hale are going to have to be on it from minute one. And it's funny for everything they've won and. Like Bally Hale should have won the club final in February. They were the better team for the guts of 62 or three minutes, but Bally Gunner hit them with that sucker punch and there was no time to respond. But Bally Gunner are most people's favourites probably going into this weekend, uh, probably based largely on their form, particularly in the last couple of games. They were like Napier should really threw it down to them and they were looked in trouble in that game and eventually were, you know, five point winners and comfortable enough winners. Bally A really threw it down to them last day in the Munster final. And they kind of coasted home in that last quarter as well. So uh, it's fascinating. The, the the shoe is on the other foot probably from February in that Ballygunner are champions and they're probably carrying that favourites tag now as well. Yeah, so Ballygunner, nine in a row, as you mentioned, to Waterford and three Munster title in four years and now defending All-Ireland champions. Uh, give us the word, by the way, on Patrick Fitzgerald for Ballygunner. So... He scored 1-4 in the semi-final teenager. I think it's his first year out of minor. Is he as, 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 as promising as all that reads or am I putting too pressure on a youngster? No, he's pretty tasty, Joe, to be fair. Uh, he was, uh, so 
when they uh, when they carried on earlier this season into the All Ireland semi final stages, so technically, you know, he would be able to see, train with the seniors, but he would still be a minor because it's going from last season. So he was training with the seniors, but wasn't eligible to play. But by all accounts, he was absolutely lighting it up. And all the talk was was that you know Bally Gunner are going to be even stronger next year. They have this lad coming along, uh, and he was, you know, I think he started one of his first games to start, I think, was the, the semi-final. He lit it up in the Watford semi-final, had a quiet county final. I don't know whether, you know, the nerves got to him or just the fact that it was a horrible day against Mount Zion. Struggled that day and has been phenomenal ever since. A couple of man of the match displays. Uh, just a really, really keen eye for goal. Um, looks to have slotted into their, their kind of... Um, Team play very, very easily as well. Set up Desi for a couple of scores. Desi sets up him for a goal as well. And it's not just all focusing on Desi Hutchinson now. Like Teams really need to look at Patrick Resurge. So last year, Ballyhale were able to somewhat negate Desi to an extent for you know, 45, 50 minutes. And then he got a crucial goal. I think he ended up at 1-3. But he will, he will do that like in a given day. And you'll kind of put your hands up and say it's okay. But if there's another guy with the potential in the far corner to do the same, they've got a, they've got another problem to deal with on Sunday, Ballyhale do. And there's definitely been uh, openings in the Ballyhale defence in the last two games. Nace could have had three or four goals in the first half, only for a couple of great saves by Dean Mason. And uh, Kilma could have had a couple of more the last day on top of the two that they got. So, yeah, I think there's a bit of pressure on Fitzgerald's shoulders all well, already. Uh, and probably, you know, plenty of talk about him fitting in under his namesake Davy in Waterford next year. But I think the uh, I think the talk is is you know, it's more than uh, credible at this stage just based on what he's done at senior level already. He's made a fantastic impact. Okay, and the nature of this rivalry. So we mentioned the friendly comments at the outset, and there is the geographical proximity as well. Would this have been a traditional rivalry are these two sick of the side of each other like did your dad play against my dad and your granddad played against my granddad and it's that kind of thing or is this a more recent rivalry really not so much more of more of a recent rivalry okay. Ballyhale beat them in the uh, in the all Ireland club semi final in Henry's first year uh, as manager um Bally Gunner were after beating the Pierce and kind of getting that pebble out of their shoe of winning a Munster because they hadn't won one in a while but Ballyhale were much the better team that day. I think the I think the Reeds and the Mahonies are actually second cousins as well. But right. we put it to I put it to one of the Bally Gunner players about you know is that ever talked about and he didn't even know that they were related. So I don't know if that's a, if that's a big issue. Yeah. If they didn't think that they were going to be meeting each other at All Ireland stages, I'm sure like if you're looking for you know one of the best challenge games in the country. You know, Bally Hale would be looking for Bally Gunner and vice versa, but they probably knew they were going to meet at some stage and didn't want to show yes. any of their cards. But it's the sort of thing. Um, obviously, Colin Fenley is, you know, 33, TJ is 35, Joy Holden's in his early 30s as well. But it's the sort of thing where you're looking like Bally Hale are going to be around for a long time. Bally Gunner are probably going to be around for a long time as well. They have a couple of older players as well in mm. Stephen O'Keefe and Shane O'Sullivan, Barry Coughlin and Philip Manny. But what's coming, the conveyor belts of what's coming and the younger players that's coming into two clubs. It's probably a rivalry that um, is going to be spicy on Sunday and it will probably be spicy for the next couple of years because I'd imagine, you know, Sunday's not going to be an outlier. They're going to meet again and yes, potentially okay. again. Okay, yeah, very interesting. I mean, I just asked because sometimes, as you mentioned, with challenge games and, uh, you know, hurling not being in every town necessarily in the country, that sometimes relations are very good with towns close by and look, we'll play in your place this time and you put on the sandwiches and vice versa. And, it, you know, it's all very cordial. So I, I, I it's, sometimes it's interesting to get a sense of these... Uh, relationships, but not so cordial at the moment is what we're saying. Is this uh, for you pretty much the final then? The quasi-final and, and uh, whoever comes through here, absolute raging hot favourites for the final? They will be favourites, all right, but um, it's funny, if ba if Ballyhale Shamrocks win, uh, they're likely to face off against St. Thomas's, who they robbed in an all Ireland Club semi-final last year, and Thomas has produced a performance in that semi-final last year that was, you know, probably the best that they've produced, and that's including their All Ireland win in two thousand and thirteen. So uh, I think it's probably a bit simplistic to say that, uh, and the you know, the whole thing of it will probably be billed as I don't even really think it has been billed as the semi final. That's actually the final because right. particularly uh, Dunlai who Cullen's got over Schlock Neil, who have put it, you know, really served it up to Ballyhale a couple of years ago and served it up to Ballygunner last year. 
they're coming up against Thomas's who have just done five in a row in Galway mm. and we all know kind of the tradition associated with Galway clubs at all Ireland level so no I, w- I wouldn't think so Thomas's would be favourites to go through in the other uh, the other semi-final and I'd be fairly confident you're going to get a very good final regardless of, of who they're up against and when is the final early January yeah, I think it's uh, mid. I think it's mid January. Yeah, okay. early to mid January. Yeah, it's a funny one that the the football All Ireland semi finals aren't being played till after Christmas, and the hurling ones are being played before Christmas. And then just when you look, when we talk about it in the broader scheme of you know a clashing with a World Cup, it just seems a a bit mad that they're kind of shoving this in a week before Christmas. But listen, whoever whoever wins on Sunday. It'd be fairly nice. I'd say you'd still enjoy your turkey or whatever on, on Christmas Day, even if you do have an All Ireland final a couple of weeks after. Yeah, I would think so. Has it been a good club championship on the whole? Have you enjoyed it, or what would you say about the, the first version of this split season in 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 twenty twenty two? Yeah, no, I have to say I I really enjoyed it. Um, I suppose the, the clarity for club players of knowing when they're playing and knowing when everything on is on is huge as regards. You know, knowing when to potentially plan weddings, knowing when to pl- potentially plan holidays, that has been great. There's been some absolute belters of games. Um, even the 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 Ulster final last Sunday between yeah. between Kilku and the Glen was um that was as tense of a club game as I've seen in a long time. And when you look back at some of the club games already this year, so clubs have more time with their county players now. Mm. So I actually think you can see a clear step up in the levels and the standards in club games already. Ballygunner and the Pearshig was as good of a club hurling game as we've seen in I don't know how long. Right. Uh, Kilmacud and Ballyhale at times was as well. Ballyhale and Ballygunner too. And then I'd say Kilku and the Glen the last day was probably club football probably taken to another level. So I think the potential is high over the, over the coming years that when club managers have a clearly defined season, get more access to their county players, more access to systems and been able to plan things a bit longer with all your best players on floor. I think the standard could rise uh, even higher again. And that's an exciting, that's an exciting proposition. So who wins? Uh, I, I, I obviously I'm involved in racing a bit as well. So I would, you know, you place a lot on farm and Bally Gunner are the farm team at the moment. Um, and have probably come through greater tests than Ballyhale and have come through them a bit more with a bit more swagger, a bit more comprehensively. And while you're looking, Ballyhale, Shamrocks have waited eight months for this, or not eight months, ten months for this game. Mm. And they're the ones seeking revenge. But even just Colin Fenley's comments is given, maybe I think, given Ballygunner motivation that, oh, that they don't big need. Time. Be a big you know? fire I, in Ballygunner now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, And that's, a, again, that's an exciting proposition. But I, I would probably be favouring Ballygunner um, just because the consistency of their performance across the whole game, when Ballyhale have been good, they've been very, very good. Okay. And if they're able to produce it for 60, 65 minutes, they'll win the game. But I think form-wise, Ballygunner's form has been, the graph has been a lot more steady, shall we say, than than Ballyhale. So Ballygunner just to edge it again, probably just in, probably to be a point or two in it most of the way and just to kick on and potentially win by three or four. Okay, good man. Well, listen, Michael, I'd say you've tempted people to at least double screen on Sunday and try and catch a bit of this. <laughs> That's the least they could do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Michael Verney of the Irish Independent. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Michael. Cheers, Joe. Good man. Cheers. Michael Verney with us there on the line and our uh, GA coverage and our club coverage in particular is in partnership with AIB. Proud sponsor of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. You can check out hashtag the toughest for more. The GAA Club Championship Preview on Off The Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the Football, Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships.